Hallelujah. For this is the day that the Lord has made. I shall be glad and rejoice in it. The Bible tells us where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And we came to church to celebrate the Lord. We find that we had groups here, here, and here, and, and it was a, a spirit of heaviness. But I come today to say that God is who he is, and God take care of all of us. So today we come with a word of hope on today. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your perfect way. Open our hearts and open our minds that we may receive truth on today. Happy Mother's Day. I don't like to just classify Mother's Day as the one that only gives birth. Because we all have dabbled in motherhood. Be it that you have raised grandchildren, be it that you have raised nieces, nephews, I think we all can say that we have played a genuine role in mothering a child. So I feel like this message is for all of us. I called my mother today on my way here and I said, Happy Mother's Day. And she said, thank you, gal. <laughs> and I said, well, you make sure you pray for me because I got to bring the word today. And she told me, she said, well, okay. She said, you know I can do it. She said, you just take your time and let God see you through it. So I'm going to be an obedient child. I'm going to take my time. And I'm going to let God see me through it. Watch this. If you have your Bibles, if you would be so kind, turn to 1 Samuel. The first chapter, the 15th verse. And I ask that you stand. 1 Samuel 1, verse 15. And I ask that you keep your Bibles open even after we get through reading the passage. And it reads as this, But Hannah answered, answered and said, No, my Lord. I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. You may be seated. If I had to pen this text, I would simply call it the things we go through. The things we go through. Now, now watch this. I was in my study on last evening, and I was at my computer, and in the midst of my read, an advertisement came up on my computer about the Timex watch. And it piqued my interest because the Timex watch looked so unique. So I began to read the history of a Timex watch. And it reads as such, it said that a Timex watch is one of the largest manufacturers of a wrist, wrist watch. It said that it is founded and established in 1854. It began to say that the character of a Timex watch is affordable but priceless. It began to say that it's brilliancy at its finest. It then tells me about the Timex watch. He say, the older the watch get, the more valuable it becomes. Come on. A Timex watch is timeless. 
is what it says. It began to say that a Timex watch is the maestro of time wear. Well. Now that's a Timex watch. Well, now you know today we don't want to see a Timex. If it ain't got Michael Kor or Coach on it, we don't want it. But I'm here to tell you the quality of a Timex watch. Watch this. It began to tell me the quality of this Timex watch. It begins to say that this watch has been stress tested in extreme conditions. It say that it has been exposed to severe weather. It said that they have put the Timex in rain. So they put it in sleet and put it in sunshine. So it's found not to be that a Timex watch is dust proof. It say it's waterproof. It say it's weatherproof. It say it's shock resistant. He said the Timex watch has been tried and tested. And said this watch has been proven. I said to myself, God, why did you bring this up before me today? And he said, Pat, because women and mothers it's just like a Timex watch I said what you say and I began to ponder this thing he said that we have been around for a long time he said we are timeless we're priceless we're brilliant at our finest he said the older we are the wiser we become come on somebody he said we have experience tested and he said but anyway we still come out all right He said that we have weathered our tsunamis. So we've been faced with some rough times. And we've been faced with some tough times. But I'll tell you, you're just like a time mix watch. He said, you take those lickings, but you keep on ticking. Ah, look. Have you been there? Have you ever taken a licking? Have you ever taken a licking from your child? But you found yourself kept on ticking. See, mamas don't give up. Mamas don't give up. I don't care how hard it is. Mamas just don't give up. I don't care what you say about mine. I'm not going to give up on mine. My mama said, take my time. The things that we go through. Today, God brings before us a woman that is in great face of opposition. This is a woman of sadness and a woman of shame. She was barren, she was broken, and she was burdened. But God blessed her. If you will, and I ask that you keep your Bibles open. If you can look at verse 6, and I'm going to tell you about her burden. It tells us that her rivalry also provoked her severely and made her miserable because the Lord had closed her womb. Now, listen, I just want to give you some history. Here is a woman by the name of Hannah. She's married to a man by the name of Elkanai. And Elkanai has another wife by the name of Pania. And this is the thing about it. Back then, in those days, that poly polygamy was okay. In other words, you can have more than one wife. And it stated that if you can have one wife, another wife, because if you had a wife that was barren, it was okay for you to marry someone else to have children. Okay, now this could have been a beautiful time of co-parenting. But instead of this woman being this extra wife, being a help, she was only a hindrance. Now, now get this, they all was on their way to worship. They all was on their way to Shiloh to worship the Lord. Instead of this extra wife worshiping and making this a beautiful co-parenting experience, she began to pick at the wife. And the Bible says not only did she 
pick at the wife, they said she provoked her severely. And I thought about that in my sanctified mind. I wonder what was she saying. I could imagine every time she get on the wagon and she tried to make it real, real heartfelt. Uh, Y'all go tell your daddy. Oh, this man wants some more children. I just don't know what to do. I could imagine she made the atmosphere real uncomfortable because they said all she did was cry. All Hannah could do was cry. So you can imagine that this was a crazy scenario. She provoked her severely, the Bible tells us, and made her miserable. Get this. The Bible didn't say she made him miserable for one trip. The Bible didn't say that she made him miserable for a month. The Bible says she made him miserable year after year. Watch this. But God is going to show us something. If you look at verse 10, and it says she was, and she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she said, she made a vow and said, O Lord of God of hosts, if you will indeed look on my afflictions of your, man, your maid servant. Now this is what Hannah began to do. Now here is this woman constantly picking, constantly making life rough on her. But here what she did, she began to petition the Lord. And I thought about this. Sometimes when we're in chaotic situations, if we just put everything to the side and begin to petition the Lord on our behalf you'll be surprised what God will do so many t- now listen this is the part that I- she began to make it real plain she said your maid servant she began to say remember me and not forget your main servant see now this is the thing you have to make yourself presentable before God being a mother you just can't come any kind of way some of us have dog passes of our mother but if you're going to have a mother to petition the Lord you got to position yourself right she knew who she was And she told God about it. And that's the thing that we should do in the midst of our chaos. We should never stop presenting ourselves before God. She went to Shiloh year after year still seeking God. I like that. I like that. It was ugly. The situation was real ugly, but she still kept serving God. You know, sometimes when our child's children can get on our nerves, we'll stop coming to church. But we can learn from Hannah right now that regardless of what it feels like, regardless of what it looked like, regardless of what you know, you keep presenting yourself to the Lord. Hannah? presented herself to God. Now, and you find in verse 11, it said that, and well, we're going to go on. It say in verse 12, it said, and it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli washed her mouth. Listen, the thing that a mother will do, regardless of anything else, is stay in prayer for her child. Stay in prayer for her child. And this is what she did. And the man of God began to look at her. And he began to say, this lady is drunk. Have you ever talked to a drunk person? It can be endless, can't it? (laughs) Have you ever tried to have a conversation with a drunk man? The more you listen, the more they began to talk. And this is why Eli came to the conclusion that Hannah was drunk. It's because she tarried before God a long time. That's our lesson. You can't just go to God sometime one time. Sometimes he don't answer the first time you pray. Sometimes he don't answer the second time you pray. Sometimes he don't answer the hundredth time you pray. But I tell you, if you just stay like Hannah, and if you just keep your face in God's hands, he will see you through. We find that she stayed in the presence of God. We find that she petitioned before God. 
And this is the thing that I like. If we move on over to verse 15, if you move on, it says, But Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I'm not a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink. They were saying right there, and I, I thought about it when they said, Wine, intoxicating drink is a beer. A Michelob. All right. <laughs> a Bud Light. Yeah. A Mike. <laughs> he, was being, he began to say, he, he said, this lady is drunk. Simply because she was tearing before God. But then when she began to pour her heart out before the man of God, I really love this part. Pour my spirit, my soul out before the Lord. And that's what mothers do. The spirit of the Lord began to minister to me right there. It said that so many times that we'll come to church and we're camouflaged. Come on now, we don't tell the real issue. We try to look good before people before they know that we are really hurting. But I don't play with God, and I don't play with my feelings. If I'm, listen, if I'm mad, I tell God I'm mad. If I'm sad, I tell God I'm sad. If I'm jealous, I tell God I'm jealous. If I say, God, I don't like it, I tell him. And why? Because you know what? Hannah told us that she poured her soul out before God. In other words, she told God all about it. I could imagine what she told God. I could imagine what she said. Now watch, I can just hear. You know I can hear things. I can, I can hear. God, now you know I've been coming year after year. Serving you faithfully. God, you know that this extra wife is making my life miserable. And I have, now listen, if you look at the story, she never mentioned the behavior to her husband, what this extra wife was doing. Oh, look, look, let, me, look, let me tell you what I thought about right there. When we go through something, if we just wouldn't tell everybody, So many times they cannot help us. And she had sense enough to know that. She never told her husband about this pickified woman. She simply poured her soul out to God. Now we're going to see the results. She began to tell Eli what was going on. Eli then said to her, do not consider your maid servant, she said, do not consider your maid servant a wicked woman. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, I have spoken until now. The first time she really talked about it. Watch this. Then Eli answered. Then the man of God, somebody that knows the heart of God, he opens his mouth. And this is what he said. Go in peace. And the God of Israel, grant your petition, which you have asked. Keep petitioning until you get your answer. Keep, your, keep it before God until you get your answer. Listen, I don't care how long it's been. I don't care how deep you think they're into it. Keep it before God. Listen. Somebody from the shout right now. Get this. And she said, let your maidservant find favor in your sight. Watch this. Watch this. I'm about to shout my own self. So the woman went her way 
and she ate and her face was no longer sad. Well, why you get so happy right there? She hadn't had the baby, but she started treating it as if she was already done. She began to see this situation different. Listen, listen, watch this. Beforehand, this lady did not eat. When they went to Shiloh, when they went to Shiloh, it was a big feast. It just wasn't what we do. You know, chickens and greens and stuff like that. Oh, they laid out the lamb. They laid out the wine. They did it all. They did it to the nine. But when the food was before her at first, this lady made her life so miserable she couldn't eat. I have yet to encounter that. <laughs> Ain't nobody made my life that miserable. Oh, no. Watch this. But now, now, it's a different story. This is what I want you to see. It had not happened. She just went out on a word. She just went out on the word of God. They said she, she, she went and she ate. And look, and then said, her face was no longer sad. Now look, this is the thing I said to myself. I said, listen, when we're in a bad situation, we're going to have to act like it's already done. You got to act like it's done. Watch this. God honors. The things that come out of our mouth. God tells us, he say, life, listen, your life, your death is in the power of your tongue. This lady had sense enough. Even though the Bible said that the Lord closed her womb, she knew that if God closed it, that God can open it. Watch this. Watch this. We have seen her present herself before God. We have seen her petition before God. We have seen her pray before God. And if I could just put a pin on prayer. I want every mother to know that prayer really does work. I, I mean really work. I, I, I wish I can tell you how good God is. When it comes down to prayer, I can see God working in my life. I can see some things turning around. I remember, and I know my child said, Mama, don't start. <laughs> he was in Michigan driving truck. I was in Augusta at the mall. And he called me. And uh, I heard the worst sound as a mother. It was an accident all on the interstate. It was all on the news, cars catching on fire. It was an ice storm, and it was a blackout. Trucks running into each other, cars on fire. Smoke as far as you can see. It was a billow. And all I heard was the phone drop. I heard a cry and I heard the phone, the phone drop. And I knew that that was my child. Yeah. There in the mall, I began to turn back around. And I got in my car and I said, God, you got to fix it. If I don't know anything else, I know that prayer travels. Prayer left Augusta and went all the way to Michigan. And I began to look at a picture when all was over. My child was just fine. I pulled up on the internet and I saw this swift truck. And it was the truck that my child was driving. I saw in front of it was a young man. I started looking real close, Miss William. I said, that child is mine. He was walking around. You cannot tell me that prayer don't travel. You don't, listen, 
I don't care where they in. If it's the dope house, the drug house, the whole house, drug travels. Prayer travels. Sister, prayer travels. Prayer travels. Prayer travels. Prayer show never travel. I couldn't go to Michigan. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. God ain't finished with them yet. To God be the glory. Hannah. She tells us so much. And she teaches us so much. And if you, get, if you look at verse 19. I love this part. They said that then they rose early in the morning and worshiped the Lord. <laughs> you know, it's nothing like getting up early in the morning to worship God. Hannah had not seen a baby, but she did get up early the next morning and began to worship the Lord. I believe that her worship was different that time. I believe her worship was not the same as it had been before. I believe I hear Hannah say, I will bless the Lord at all times. For his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I believe that Hannah said he now know what I need. And he shall supply all of my needs. I can see Hannah walking like never before. I can see Hannah hands up high. I can see Hannah praising the Lord. The Bible tells us. Watch this. She praised so hard. The very next sentence say, when they got home, okay. So when they got home, the Bible said Elkanah knew his wife. <laughs> that means that he slept with them. And some stuff began to happen. <laughs> you see what a praise to do? <laughs> Watch this. I'm almost done. But my mama told me to take my time. Watch this. It said after they worship and that they got back to their house, Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife. Okay. Now we see that Hannah, that she presented herself before God. We see Hannah, she petitioned, she petitioned and she prayed before God. And now we saw that Hannah began to praise before God. And I believe that if we do all of those things, we would then see the promise of God. How do you say a promise, Pat? Because in verse 20, it say, so it came to pass. In the process of time that Hannah conceived and bore a son and named him Samuel. She saw the promise. She saw the promise. And, and I began to think about that. Once you see the promise of God, once you live right, and once you live the way that God will have you to live, and if you stay before God and you petition God, you cannot tell me that God would not let you see that promise. For God is a man that he shall not lie, nor is he the son of man that he shall repent. Look, not only did the Lord let her see the promise. Yes, Lord. Listen, God opened her womb so that the Bible begins to tell that she began to have more children. More children. 
he knew her even more. I imagine he didn't see, look, he didn't see that extra wife as often. I imagine he stayed around the house a little bit more because Hannah began to have more babies and more babies. That was just part of the promise. God will and God can see you through. We've learned lessons from Hannah today. The things that we go through. Simply the things that we go through. As I get ready to take my seat, I, I just tell you that to stay like Hannah. Stay before God, even matters not what it looks like, just stay before God. If I could, I want to call just a couple of witnesses. If they were standing here, they would bring something to the forefront of our minds. If I could bring Sarah on the scene, I imagine she would tell us, she'll say sometimes God's words seem impossible. Sometimes we even laugh because we think God is not going to see us through. I can see Sarah saying, but if you keep on trusting God, you're going to see your Isaac after a while. I believe I could bring Moses' mother to the scene. Moses' mother said, desperate people does different things. Have you ever felt like Moses' mother? Have you ever done some desperate things for your children? Have you went to the wild for your children? I can imagine Moses' mother saying sometimes when things get ugly and the world is trying to consume your child. I can hear mothers, um, uh, Moses' mother say, just put them in a basket. In other words, put them in God's hand and watch God safely see them through. Oh my God, I see one more woman. She got one more thing to say. It's this lady by the name of Mary. Anybody know Mary? Anybody familiar with Mary? Can I tell you about Mary? I can see Mary saying, regardless of what happens, you gotta love them from the cradle to the grave. Oh, you got to love them. I can hear Mary saying, you witness them. Sometime like your child is carrying a cross that's too heavy for them. But those are the things that we just go through. I can hear Mary just ministering to us and she say, sometimes our children look like they're being crucified and nobody seems to care. But those are the things that we just go through. But then I can hear Mary saying, but if you let your child get to know my child, everything will be all right. Come on. You got to get to know Mary's baby. The bright in the morning star. The one that died for all of us. The one that was on Calvary's cross. They bore in a tomb and laid him in him. But three days later, hallelujah, he got up. He got up. He sure enough got up with all power in his hand. If you want it all right, if you really want it all right, it's our job to make sure that our children know about Mary's baby. It's our job to tell them about a living Savior. Hallelujah. The doors of the church is open. The doors of the church is open. Hallelujah. If you don't know this Savior, if you don't know him, this is the day. Right here. Right now. This is the day of the day of salvation. 
I ask that you come. Will there be one? If you died today, 